guys, welcome to JTechWP. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to speed up your website using Lightspeed Cache and connect it to QuickCloud CDN. If you don't have a Lightspeed server already, I've put some links in the description below and included the servers that I use. I've got like Name Hero in USA and also Crystal. So if you could use the links below, that'd be much appreciated as it really helps the channel. I'm going to show you how to connect to the Quick CDN. We're also going to set up WebP images to speed up your site. Whenever you're doing speed optimization, always test the site on the front end to make sure it's still working. Worst case scenario is if, if you turn the setting on, it breaks the site, turn it off, and your site should come back to normal again. Please make a note of your site speed at the start of the tutorial, and then see what you get at the end, and let me know in the comments below how much faster your site is. Lightspeed Cache only works with a Lightspeed server, so if you're running Nginx or just the standard PHP, this isn't going to work for you. But if you are on Lightspeed, you're going to see some good improvements. Name Hero is really good if you're in the USA or near the Netherlands. I recommend the Turbo Cloud one as it uses NVMe storage, which is a bit faster than SSD. They're both good, but uh, this just gives you a little bit of extra speed. So you could select US Data Center or Netherlands Data Center. The other host, which is my main one, is Crystal in the UK, and they're fantastic. They've got various web hosting packages and it works flawlessly. Before I add the cache plugin, I'm going to check the speed of the site. So I get a GT metrics, paste in my URL, test the site, and then just wait for a few moments. We're looking at a degrade at the moment, so we should be able to boost that quite significantly once we put the cache plugin in and start enabling things. Log into your WordPress admin. Then we're going to go to plugins, add new in the search box. We're going to search for Lightspeed and we're looking for Lightspeed Cache made by Lightspeed Technologies and looking at reviews, lots of reviews, so I know it's really good. Install now. Once it's installed, press the activate button. You'll get a message saying plugin activated. You can now run another speed test if you wanted to, see if there's any difference. And straight away, just by enabling the plugin, we've gone from a D grade to a B grade, so everything's improved a little bit, so that's a good start. We're going to dive into the settings by going to Lightspeed Cache. We're going to the dashboard here. It'll give us an overview of what's happening. We need to go into General. Now that we're in the general settings, you can request a domain key, which will take a few moments. And also, while we're waiting for this, I'd scroll down to Server IP. Click on check my public IP, copy this, so you can do control C on a PC or command C on a Mac, command V or control V to paste it in, press save changes. While you wait for your domain key to be approved, I would suggest signing up for Quick Cloud. it's completely free, and I would tend to use the Google option, so sign in with Google if you've got that. After a couple of minutes I refresh my browser. And it's now telling me I must link to the Quick Cloud. So our key is there. Link to Quick Cloud. Go and sign in with Google. Click on my Google account. And there we go. It's connected. So that's that part done. Save changes. We're going to dive into the cache settings. So Lightspeed Cache. Most of them I don't actually touch because default is pretty good. So the first page, I don't touch anything on here. Cache mobile, no need to turn that on unless you've got a separate AMP site. If you're not sure about something, you can hover over the learn more and click it and it'll open it up in a new panel and it gives you a more detailed explanation about what it does. So we can leave that one exactly how it is. TTL, never needed to touch that. Leave all those on the default settings. Purge and upgrade, I always leave that on. Generally, all these are all good, so you don't need to change anything. Excludes. If you wanted to exclude a page, you can put the URL in here. Maybe like a contact form or like a checkout if you've got an e-commerce site. But it is geared up, so if you do have WooCommerce on here, it will uh, work it out and have the optimal settings straight away. ESI. Again, I leave all of these on default. Object. This is where we are going to tweak a few settings. I prefer to use Redis, which is here. At the moment it's disabled. 
I've just dived into cPanel and we're going to do a search for PHP. We're looking for select PHP version. Make sure that you're running 7.4 is currently the latest version. And then we're going to look for Redis, which is here. I'm going to tick that. That's enabled Redis. And then we're going to go back to our cache. I'm just going to refresh the page. And we can now see that Redis extension is enabled. And I select Redis. And we're going to need to change the port. It tells you here. So I'm going to change that to 6379. The reason I use Redis is it's just a bit more effective. It's like running things in parallel. So it does it a little bit quicker. With Redis enabled, we're also going to turn on the object cache. If you can't enable this, you don't want to turn this on because it might cause conflicts and issues. But if you can enable Redis or Memcache, then turn this on. And the rest of these, I'm going to leave them exactly as they are. Save changes. If you find that you're experiencing like old content displaying, there's a good chance it might well be this, which is the cache WP admin. If you are having this issue, turn that off and save changes. I would tend to leave mine off by default just as a safety precaution. In the browser tab, I turn browser cache on. Save changes. In the advanced tab, login cookie, leave that blank. Improve HTTP, leave that off. Instant click, I'm going to turn on. It just means that if someone hovers over a page link, it's going to preload the page in the background and make your site feel a bit faster. Save changes. I'm quickly going to retest my site now just to see what it's like. And it's improving with every little tweak that we're making. So uh, it's looking good right now. I'm going to keep going. We're now going to add the CDN. Moving on to the next tab, CDN. I'm going to enable it and turn it on. We don't need to turn on CDN mapping because that's only applicable to other CDNs and not our quick CDN. Save changes. I'm going to go into my quick cloud area. We can see there in the overview, it says status CDN disabled. I click on the CDN tab, enable CDN. I want to use quick cloud DNS, confirm choice. Okay, those all look okay to me. Enable and add records. And then I've got to go into my name servers and then I've got to change these. I go to change name servers. Where it says first name server, I paste in the first one and second one, I paste in the second one and then press update. This may take about 24 to 72 hours for this change to take place. So you've got to be a little bit patient. I can then press refresh. All right, there we go. So that's all looking good. It says CDN's enabled and we're using the DNS and our name servers have successfully changed over. Now we've done the trickiest bit, let's go on to image optimization. Leave auto request cron off, leave these two as they are. If you're a bit short on space, you can turn this on. This will just delete the original files if you need a bit more space, but I'm gonna leave this off because I've got plenty of storage. Optimize losslessly. This will give you slightly better image quality, but you'll get bigger file sizes, so you get a slower page score. I'll leave that off. If you're a photographer and you want the EXIF and the metadata, you can turn that on, but I leave it off because I don't want that. Create WebP. Yes, we want that because we get a better Google score and image replacement on. Scroll down. Don't need to touch that. Quality settings, OK. Save changes. Then we're going to go to Image Optimization Summary. We're already connected to Quick Cloud, so I can press Gather Image Data, and it's going to check every image on the site and start optimizing it using Quick. Once it's gathered all the image data, just press Send Optimization Request, and you can leave it running. There is one kind of little bug in this. At the moment, it says Current Limits 1, so I've got to send the request again. And now our Current Limits 4, and we can see it's given us a little error. So sometimes it might be a little bit buggy, and you might need to press this a couple of times to get it to work properly. But well, we can always come back to this a little bit later on and check that it has started doing it. Going into page optimization now, this is the bit that you really can break your site. I'm going to give you the settings that I tend to use that I know work really well. CSS minify, I'm going to turn that on. CSS combine, that's going to speed it up a little bit more. Load asynchronously, generate critical CSS on, 
critical CSS in the background, that's on. And the rest all looks good, save changes. And it's at this point now I check the front end of my site in a couple of pages to make sure it all looks correct. I just ran a quick test and it seems to be okay. JS settings, JS minify, I'm gonna turn that on. Combine, again, test it. It's got a little caption on how to fix problems. Leave HTTP2 off. Load deferred JS, turn that on, save changes, and test your site. All right, so no issues with that. Optimization, HTML minify on, don't need to touch DMS prefetch. Load Google fonts asynchronously, yes. Remove WordPress emoji, turn that on, save changes. Media settings, lazy load, I'm gonna turn this on. Again, always check it. Responsive placeholder, leave that off. LQIP, leave that off. Quality, leave that as it is. Lazy load iframes, that's quite handy if you've got YouTube videos on. I've got quite a few YouTube videos, I will turn this on. Uh, always, always check your site, save changes. Media exclude, if you've got an image that's not loading, you could put its URL in here. Localization, in localization, if you've got people that are commenting, you could turn Gravatar Cache on because that'll speed it up a little bit for your users. I haven't got that on this site, but I like to turn it on anyway. Save changes. And the last tab in here, tuning. Basically, the only people that really need to touch this are speed specialists that really know their stuff. If they're optimizing the site and you're paying them to do it, they'll go and tinker with this area here, but we don't want to touch it. Save changes. Moving on to database. What I tend to do is once I've done a lot of settings, I just press clean all and it's going to give my database a little tidy up. Crawler, we don't really need to go into there. Toolbox, toolbox, this is kind of handy if you want to purge cache or purge a page, but I'm not going to touch this right now. I've just reran the test on GT metrics and it's all looking a lot better. We're now up to an A grade and performance figures are looking much better. So I'm quite happy with that. All right. So one area I spotted that is causing quite a big file size is actually the Facebook Messenger plugin. So I'm just going to try disabling that and see if that makes a difference. It should do. If it gets rid of 1.1 meg, that should make a huge difference. So I'm just going to disable the plugin now and see if that has an effect on it. Deactivate that. Then rerun the GT Matrix test. After removing the Facebook plugin, it's a little bit better again. But again, it still seems to think there's more improvements that could be made. But really, I'm super happy with that. You know, that's the blocking time. Yeah, that could be a bit better. But yeah, overall, A grade's good. I'm happy. One last test we can do is go to fastorslow.com, put your website there, and it's going to show you what your site's like across the globe on various servers. All right, there we go. So you can see we've got a performance score of 96 and all the rest are looking pretty good too. As you'd expect, countries that are a lot further away in distance would be a bit slower. Obviously I'm in the UK and Japan is quite far away. It's across the other side of the world. So you would expect it to be slower to get to those countries. But all in all, it's actually looking pretty good. So just showing you a little map of the geography. And further down the page, it's going to give you all the different speed ratings for each country. Just a quick note, I went back to the image section and as you can see, it's only optimized 1% uh, of the images. One little tweak we can do to solve that is turn auto request cron to on, save changes. And then I'm going to try it again, send optimization request but I do think there is a little bit of a bug in the plugin. On some sites I've had this work perfectly and other sites I've had it where it does this. After enabling the auto cron, it seemed to work a lot better. So I press send optimization request. You can see it's gone from about four to 100, but we're still getting the error, but it's just a case of do it a couple of times and it should all be okay. Hopefully they'll fix it in an update.
If you found this useful, please check out my online courses. I've got web design courses, video editing courses and filming courses. The links are in the description below. Well guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and smash that subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.